As we continue to prepare ourselves for the kingdom of heaven, there are many different thoughts and ideas that need to be challenged as the ways of this world grow to our religion for the new world order. So many today have been following the ways of this world and have been attaching themselves to a mindset that does not come from the God that they say that they love and worship. We have been unfortunately swayed so much by the enemy that many of us do not really understand the Elohim of ancient Israel. If you ever want to understand the overall problem, here's a simple summary. The problem is that so many of us are practicing religion rather than practicing relationship and obedience. Today, our faith has been transformed into a form of culture that has nothing to do with the God that everyone says that they love and desire to be in connection with. And as this has spread, we have a generation of believers who say out of their mouths that they love him and that they desire to be saved by him, but they still do not know him. People are so attached to other influences that they don't truly recognize our creator and his will for us. And unfortunately, many people are supporting children of Satan and satanic goals because they haven't searched out Yah for themselves, away from religion. People don't know Yah. They know a religion, and it unfortunately depends on their race, their culture, their influences, their denominations, their pastors, their social media algorithms, etc. And today, we have believers who claim a love for Yah without truly knowing Him or understanding Him. And there truly is an answer to all this as we get closer into the most false deceptive times of world history. But what is the answer to this? We need to get back to the basics of who Yah is and how he has revealed himself to us in order to understand him and to follow him. The Bible says the devil has deceived the whole world. And so there must be a clearing up of these falsehoods and clearly bring about knowledge of Yah in fullness. There is a lie and falsehood that needs to be corrected because it is one that is a strong foundation of misunderstanding Yah today. I was having a discussion with someone the other day because he had a problem with my emphasis on Yah's holy name, and then he felt I was disrespecting the name of Jesus. In my discussion with him, I asked him a question, and his answer really opened my eyes to the spiritual deception that has become a foundation of error in the lives of people seeking Yah today. I asked him, can we know and understand Yah while only reading the New Testament? And his answer was a confident yes. He politically said, the Old Testament is important, but you don't need to read it to know and understand Yah. And it was this statement that really confirmed to me what Father had been speaking to me about. Because when I was a churchy Christian, this is what I felt as well. And though hearing the words of Yahusha are important, I never understood Father and his ways and what his commands were until I actually read the Old Testament for myself. You see, faith in Yah today has been hijacked by many different groups, but three groups in particular need to be addressed. And if you don't recognize the hijacking, mark this as a point that you lack understanding. Those groups are the Roman Catholic Church, the modern day Jews, and the American slash English Christian Church. And because of these groups and how they have steered the world over centuries, understanding Yah has been lost from our society even though he has preserved himself and allowed all of us to be able to come to know him. There is a feeling that you do not need to know or understand Israel in order to understand Yah and Yahusha. And because of this, there is a great reason why there is such a disconnect to Yah and obeying his commands. But understand, there are very big reasons why you need to understand Israel. The children of Israel were and are very important they were chosen by Yah to be examples of him. And though their story has a lot of ups and many big downs, Yah is still not done with them. You cannot understand the God of the Hebrews while ignoring the Hebrews. We need to fully understand this so Yah can truly be understood and magnified. We are now going to start a series about the importance of Israel. Let's begin. Okay, so... In subjects like this, it's always hard to know where to begin. Do you start with the truth or do you start with the lies? But the truth is that when we focus on the lies, we often can never get to the truth because the lies are in the abundance 
And there are so many of them. So what we'll do is cover the truth first, and then, Yah willing, we'll get to where the lies have come in place. If we start at our current times, there's a lot going on in reference to the Jewish people in Israel and around the world. They are looking for their Messiah, and they want to rebuild their temple. Many people right now are speaking about the fact that more spotless red heifers have been sent to Israel in order for their proper dedication of the temple to happen. People that are attached to the world, the narratives, and history told by those in control today are in a bit of confusion as to what they want to believe and how they want to support the modern day Jews because they know that when this group finds their Messiah and builds their temple, it will be for the Antichrist and actually against the Bible that they believe in. But what they're dealing with and the question they have is, aren't good Christians supposed to support Israel because they're God's chosen people? Nobody is really out here in the Christian pulpits really explaining this. And so there's confusion. And then there are black people around the world who are claiming to actually be the true descendants of Israel. There are a lot of different sects of them, but they are most generally labeled black Hebrew Israelites. And like I said, there are many different camps, but for the most part, they are identified by the most angry ones that declare that salvation is only for them. They are moved through a great deal of pride and anger, and it's very hard for others on the outside to look past it. But some of the things that they say about their history definitely make sense, and they believe in the Messiah. But again, there really isn't a lot of people in the Christian pulpits really explaining all this to help make sense of it all. So what should we believe? Who are the real Jews? Who are the ones who fit what Yahusha said in Revelation chapter 2 and 3 verses 9 about the synagogue of Satan? We know Yahusha, who in English the world refers to as Jesus, we know he probably didn't look like this. But listen, he definitely wasn't black, right? Does this even matter? People that want to focus on this are just focusing on the wrong things. We just need to be focusing on Jesus, right? <laughs> I mean, this is what people say. I mean, the amount of different thoughts and questions that surround this topic are in the abundance. And I'm sure there are many of you that probably have asked these same questions or thought these same thoughts. Well, let me tell you and assure you very much that this subject is extremely important for many different reasons. I mean, think about it. What if by supporting modern day Jews, you are in fact supporting a group that is actually on the opposite side of our Bible? What if that support has tied you with the ways of this world and has kept you in a state of spiritual blindness? We cannot serve two masters, so we need to be sure of what we are believing in. Or if they really are Jews, and I believe that they are not, have I gone against Yah? And on the flip side, what if the true Hebrews were actually the people that descended from the people that were taken in bondage during the Atlantic slave trade? What if they are actually the true Jews, and though I said I love Jesus, I had secret animosity for the chosen people of Yah? What if I helped Satan keep them down? What if I allowed Satan to work his spiritual deception in me or my family so that I actually was against Yah's chosen people? What if I contributed an agenda against Yah's will? Or again, what if I believed they were and I was wrong? These thoughts are central to the end times, and they must be understood and clarified. Based upon prophecy, we know that Yah is not done with Israel. We know in Revelation chapter 7 that he seals 144,000 of them, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, excluding Dan. We know that the Great Tribulation is all about Israel. It is a time known as Jacob's Trouble. As Yahuwah prophesied to Israel in Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 7 through 15, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it, for it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahuwah of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck and will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve Yahuwah their Elohim and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Therefore, do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah, nor be dismayed, 
O Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of that captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. For I am with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end of you. But I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. For thus, says Yahuwah, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. There is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities. Because your sins have increased, why do you cry about your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable because of the multitude of your iniquities. Because your sins have increased, I have done these things to you. I mean, there's so much being said in these verses. I mean, in this chapter, really. But let's continue. This is what Yah has prophesied to Israel in regards to the end times. This is spoken of in numerous parts of the scriptures, like it says in Joel chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. This is prophecy. And so today, we either believe that this prophecy was fulfilled or we believe that it has yet to be fulfilled. And believe it or not, understanding this has a great deal to do with our relationship with Yah. Depending on who you believe fulfills this prophecy determines the God you are actually following. Because there is the truth and there is the lie. And if you're following the truth, you are following Yah. But if you're following the lie, you are being led by Satan, and there's no telling what he has added on with this deception with you. I want you to ask yourself, what if based on my misunderstanding of Israel, I have completely misunderstood what was going on in these end times? What does that mean for me? There are a lot of problems that can arise from being on the wrong side. And so, Yah does not desire that for you. So, let's talk about the defense, because I know there's a lot of it. The defense to these things are that, listen, I don't need to focus on this. I focus on Jesus. And because of this, I don't need to know about all this other stuff. If you're one that feels that way, let me tell you, you are entitled to your own opinion. But this is not Yah speaking through you. He does not condone our ignorance. He does not want those who follow him to ever be following Satan. You will hear these scriptures again in this series. But let me say this now to you and show you. When the Apostle Paul was speaking to the Roman Gentiles that he was preaching about Yahushua to, he said, Truly, these times of ignorance Elohim overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. You'll find that in Acts chapter 17, verses 30 and 31. So listen, for those with the defense, if you believe Yah, does not mind us being in ignorance in regards to how we worship him, then that's your understanding of him. You can take that risk if you want. We know he says in the scriptures that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's Hosea 4, 6. So are you saying that he wants us destroyed? Are you saying that he wants us with a lack of knowledge that we can have ignorance and it doesn't matter? Yahusha said in John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. Elohim is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. You see, if you love Yah, you must desire to serve him in spirit and in truth. And besides all these other important points, like I started the video with, you cannot understand Yah without understanding the nation he chose and came through. There is a difference between pagans and with those who follow Yah, the Most High, the one true God. The pagans had so many different ways that they worshiped their gods. And Israel was told for many times 
that they were not to follow the ways of the Gentiles. As it is said in Jeremiah chapter 10, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. And so because people do not understand Israel, this is why people feel that they can celebrate holidays like Christmas and Easter. It's why they feel that they can do certain things that the people of the world have done in regards to their own gods. The way that the pagan world celebrates their gods has been normalized and made to look like their way of worship is just common sense. People believe that these certain ways that pagans have celebrated their gods are okay to do because that's just the way people of the world have done it. And God knows their heart. We do as the Gentile pagan nations do and justify it by the changing of the times and saying, well, God knows my heart. This is just how people today can be liberal with their values and it changes based on how the world changes. People have also done this with our worship of Yah. And this is only condoned because people are not understanding Israel and how Yah actually directed them. So this series is going back to bring an understanding of Yah's chosen people. And from this, we can go back and understand Yah through his word not looking at him through eyes of people who told us to believe in him without actually reading his word or understanding him from the outside through our modern day history books, the way they told us to believe. We must get this right because the man of sin is rising. A new world order is coming and truth will soon be suppressed. So it's important that we all focus on this important information. So let's understand Yahuwah, who is the most high our creator. We will start at a crucial point. Yahuwah is the God of ancient Israel. Yahuwah is the name of our creator. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In English, this name is written as I am. He is Yahuwah. He is worthy of all of our worship and praise. He is our father and our creator. And today the world has been introduced to him through belief in his son whom he sent Yahusha the Messiah, whom in English is referred to as Jesus the Christ. Over time, as the devil jumped in the picture to try to hijack this faith in order for him to attain his goal to be like the Most High, he has tried to reduce our knowledge of our Father. He has tried to transform and replace who our Messiah is, and he has worked directly against Yah's chosen people to make sure that the people who truly knew Yah are no longer in the abundance or has influence. He has worked very hard to make sure that Yah's great name is not known, used, or declared. And when he can, he blasphemes it. But people just don't recognize it because they don't recognize Yah. People want to use translations all day, but they absolutely ignore it when they refer to our father in blaspheme. I'm not Ultra. I'm not Jarvis. I'm I am. By the way, it is Yah that we desire to know and be in a relationship with. But as I have said repeatedly, the problem is many of us don't know him, and this needs to be corrected. So if we're going to understand Yah, we must understand the nation he has come to us through. You can't understand him by understanding the Greeks. He didn't come through them. Israel are the only ones that can teach us about him because they were the only ones he chose to reveal himself to the world through. Now, because today, when people speak of our Messiah, whom they are actually speaking of has been reinvented and modernized, and because of this and many other factors, much of his message is not clearly understood. We want to understand him without understanding his audience. And this is another practice that we cannot do. If you want to understand a message, you must put things in context. If you're not being spoken directly to, you need to understand the audience that is actually being spoken to. Culture and historical understanding goes a long way in understanding history and a message. I can't understand a story about the history of the Chinese people while keeping them aligned to the American culture. This story would be completely misunderstood. But this is often how Israel has been told to us, and we don't even recognize it. Like those awful movies of Noah with Russell Crowe, or the movie of Egypt with Christian Bale. They translate history and culture to fit these modern times. And those influenced by that often don't even recognize it, but it affects how they understand the Bible. And with saying all that, because people have been taught an English gospel, they unfortunately do not understand things from a historical perspective away from the doctrine given from this 
English influence. Now let me be clear, when I say English gospel, I'm not speaking of the English language and the language that I'm speaking right now. I am speaking of an influence from the Church of England that so many of us are influenced by without actually knowing that we're influenced by them. These influences are so ingrained in us that they don't need to claim us. But the truth is, just because we're following their doctrines, it is us who are claiming them. That may have been too deep, and I might have gone over some heads, but maybe if you rewind it, you might understand it. But let's continue. This series will take us through a great deal of history, very similar to the History of Religion series. And so before we reach the conclusion of part one, let's at least begin to discuss the children of Israel. I'm going to skim through this for time's sake. After the flood, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We follow Shem's line down through generations until we get to Abraham. Yah made a covenant with Abraham that through him all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And this covenant was passed down to his son Isaac and then to his grandson Jacob, who Yah later renamed Israel. Jacob had 12 sons, and they are who we refer to as the children of Israel. And Yah chose this group of people as his chosen people. They were enslaved in Egypt for hundreds of years. And then through Yah's power, he moved them out to bring them into the land he had for them so that they could serve him. When speaking to Moses, Yah said this in Exodus chapter 19, verses 3 through 6. Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. He said this kind of thing many times. In Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2, it says, for you are a holy people to Yahuwah, your Elohim. And Yahuwah has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Psalm chapter 135 verse 4 says, For Yahuwah has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. You see, Yah chose this people of Israel as his people, and he desired to guide them and raise them up as priests and a holy nation. I could spend an hour just proving this point in scripture. This should not be debated, and it should be understood. But let me clear up an elephant in the room that wants to judge me before they hear me out in full. There are unfortunately many that want to judge my points before understanding where I'm going. So let me just say that I do not say this with pride, or that this is not something that put on people in hierarchy over anyone else. I'm just speaking about Yah's love to Israel, and it must be understood. The point I'm trying to make here is that Yah chose Israel and he showed himself to the world through this small nation that through him and his power, this nation was known and were very powerful. They were not the strongest by size or number, but because of the God that they served. Yah was their God. They served one God. They didn't have many different names for him. They didn't have minor gods. They had him. He is one. He is great. He wanted his name declared and known. And in that day you will say, Praise Yahuwah, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the peoples, make mention that his name is exalted. That's Isaiah chapter 12, verse 4. I am Yahuwah, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8. Therefore my people shall know my name, Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 6. You see, he desired his name known and declared. The rest of the world were pagans. They were polytheists. They believed in multiple gods. They believed in father god, mother goddess, and son of god, and then a whole bunch of other smaller gods. And it's important to identify why we say we worship the god of ancient Israel. He spoke directly to this people and chose them out of all the other peoples and nations and tribes in the world. He did not deal with the Egyptians. He did not deal with the people of Greece and choose them. He did not deal with the Romans and choose them. 
he only chose Israel. And so by doing this, he made it very easy to actually follow him. He provided us with an example of how he desired us to be and live unto him. He did not give his Torah, his law to the whole world. He gave it to Israel and he guided them through this. This was the only nation of people that we can learn from directly what Yah loves and what he hates. So again, going back to my statement about learning about Yah only through the New Testament, you cannot do this because his dealings with Israel give us direct understanding of what he feels about many different behaviors and ways of worshiping him and how we are to live. So if we want to please our father and understand his will for us, we have to understand Israel. There is so much history and understanding that we are given when we actually sit and read his word in full. We can only understand Yah's desire for the world through understanding how he dealt with Israel, what he spoke against and what he desired for them. And this is why reading the Bible in its entirety is so important. Now, we have so much to discuss in this series. And in this introduction of Israel, we're going to stop right here. But what I want to do is make sure that the important points in this video and this series are not missed. So we're going to do a recap. Here are points to know in part one of understanding Israel. Number one, we need to get back to the basics of who Yah is and how he has revealed himself to us in order to understand him and to follow him. Number two, the children of Israel were and still are very important. They are chosen by Yah to be examples of him. And though their story has a lot of ups and many big downs, Yah is still not done with them. Number three, you cannot understand the God of the Hebrews while ignoring the Hebrews. Number four, Yah is not done with Israel. He has prophecy of them in the end times. Some of them are found in Revelation chapter 7, Jeremiah chapter 30, and Joel chapter 3. Number five, today we either believe that these prophecies for Israel was fulfilled, or we believe that it has yet to be fulfilled. Depending on who you believe fulfills this prophecy determines the God you are following because there is the truth and there is a lie. Number six, we must all ask ourselves, what if based on my understanding of Israel, I have completely misunderstood what was going on in these end times. There are a lot of problems that can arise from being on the wrong side of this understanding. Number seven, there is a difference between pagans and with those who follow Yah the Most High, the one true God. Number eight, Yahuwah is the God of ancient Israel. Number nine, culture and historical understanding goes a long way into understanding a historical message. Number 10, Yah made a covenant with Abraham that passed to Isaac, then Jacob, and to Jacob's 12 sons. Yah chose this group of people as his chosen people. Number 11, Yah chose this people of Israel as his people, and he desired to guide them and raise them up as priests and a holy nation. Number 12, Yah chose Israel, and he showed himself to the world through the small nation that through him and his power, this nation was known and was powerful. They were not the strongest by size or number, but because of the God that they served. Number 13, Yah was their God. They served one God. They didn't have many different names for him. They didn't have minor gods. They had him. He is one. He is great. And he wanted his name declared and known. Number 14. He did not deal with the Egyptians and choose them. He did not deal with the people of Greece and choose them. He did not deal with the Romans and choose them. He did not deal with any other nation and choose them. He only chose Israel. Number 15. And this is the last point. He did not give his Torah his law to the whole world. He gave it to Israel and he guided them through this. This was the only nation of people that we can learn from directly what Yah loves and what he hates. And this is the starting point of where we will start in this important subject. We have a lot to discuss and go over. If you don't understand why we are discussing this, let me say one more time that this channel is one that is all about preparing the bride of Messiah for the bridegroom. This ministry is all about preparing the followers of Yah for the kingdom of Elohim. It is about breaking away from falsehoods, lies, and bondage. It is about proclaiming the great name of our creator, Yahuwah, while bringing people to him through his son whom he sent, 
Yahusha the Messiah. This ministry desires people to grow in knowledge and to stop being fed by spiritual milk as babes, but now start digesting spiritual food. We must prepare ourselves for our Father and break away from the lies of Satan. There are great lies being taught. There are pagan practices in our ways of worship. Father is seeking those who desire to worship him in spirit and in truth. And this series is an end time series that Father has finally placed my direction in delivering it. I gave a message before this that needs to be understood about this ministry and how I'm dealing with things from now on. This time is now for us to come to Father in truth and worship him the way he truly desires. The time is now to be of a sound mind and get rid of the influences of Satan. The time is now to prepare ourselves as a spotless bride and be called out and be separate. This series is for the weak and it will most certainly draw out the tears. Let's seek out our Father and serve him with all reverence, with all honor, and with all glory. For he truly is worthy to be praised. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated to this ministry. Your contribution has blessed this ministry and has helped me continue on with this assignment. Your support is a blessing. Please continue to pray for me and this ministry. I thank you for your obedience to Yah's call on your heart, and I'm humbled by your support. I'm very thankful for you. Okay, thanks again, everyone, for watching. I love you all.